In the next today the Sheikh uh, will speak about uh, a story of old woman from Bani Israel, from the, the uh, time of Bani Israel, from the, the children uh, of, of Israel. So the Sheikh, it's a no, The story is very short. Uh, so during the story, we will stop on each point, and from these points, we will extract the the benefit of the story. And at the end of the story, once we finish, we will come with the conclusion and with the with the benefit of the story. Uh, from the beginning of the story, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was with his companion in the journey. Uh, before that, uh, the Sheikh saying uh, that uh, this is uh, one of the uh, authentic story uh, mentioned in the in the book of uh, the stories of the Prophet. So it's a sto uh, authentic story. Uh, while the Prophet and the companion uh, on their way in, in, into into their uh, traveling uh, tra uh, travel. Uh, they found a tent in the middle of the desert for a Bedouin. So the companion and the Prophet went to that person uh, to get the kind of uh, hospitality. So, alhamdulillah, the, the companion and the Prophet وسلم, got the best of the uh, hospitality from this uh, Bedouin guy. and. While leaving, the Prophet ﷺ told this Bedouin guy, Tamanna means wish what you would like to wish. And now the, the benefit of this, now whenever the Prophet ﷺ said to someone that wish what you want, a person can get whatever he wants from the best of this dunya or the best of the akhirah. He is like an open check for him. And this actually happened of, uh, from one of the companions. The Prophet ﷺ said that he gave him some information. So the Prophet told him that go back and you will get two bracelets of the gold from the Roman Empire. And at that moment, it was it's like a, just a dream that how can this poor companion and the poor community of Muslims can get the bracelet of gold of the, of the <coughs> Roman Empire or the, or the Persian Empire. Uh, the story of the, of the bracelet that you know, the Prophet ﷺ actually he was escaped at that time. He was running out from the enemies. And, and this Suraqa actually came and gave him some information and the Prophet ﷺ gave him the glad tidy that inshallah go back and you will get the two bracelets of the, of the uh, Roman Empire in your hands. So it was kind of dream, like you know, the Muslim, they are weak, uh, the Prophet's uh, situation that he escaped, how he can give him a glad tidy or how can I give him a word of something which is, which is uh, hardly, uh, uh, hard to believe. And at the end, subhanAllah, after many years when the Prophet, when the, uh, after Prophet died, and after Abu Bakr actually died, and at the time of Umar, when he opened the, the Persian Empire, at his time, uh, uh, the Prophet, uh, the, the Umar, Umar, Umar. Now, uh, the, uh, Umar actually, he called where is Suraqa, and he was standing on the wealth, uh, at, the, at the treasure of, of, uh, of Persia. And he said, where is Suraqa? So Suraqa got up, and he was old at that time. And he said, this is what the Prophet ﷺ told you that you will get. So this is what from the dunya, what uh, a person can get. And also, another example that a person can get from Al-Akhirah, whatever he wants. But one day the Prophet ﷺ was on a pulpit and giving khutbah. And during the khutbah, he said there are 70,000 people will enter Jannah without any accountability. 
So one of the companions called Ukasha, uh, Ukasha, he stood up and he said during the khutbah, he stood up from because he loves, uh, you know, uh, 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 he loved the, the statement. So he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, make dua so I can be one of them, one of those people who will enter Jannah without any accountability. So Prophet said, you are among them. So he just got the Jannah without any without any uh, accountability and of course the prophet ﷺ told and gave the glad tidy to to Ukasha, of course from the from the uh, revelation came to him and he, he gave him the glad tidy and also another incident that one of the one of the companion was giving water to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make wudu. So after uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he, he made wudu, he done, and he looked at that person and he said, wish. So the the companion said, I want you, I want to be companion with you, I want to walk with you in the Jannah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him the key. The Prophet ﷺ told him that you make more sajda, you make more salah, and you make more sajda, and because of that sajda, because of that prostration, inshallah you will find yourself with me walking in the Jannah. So uh, when the Prophet ﷺ asked this Bedouin, uh, wish, he neither asked for, for something from the dunya as, as the person, he asked something from al akhirah like the, uh, this guy asking the, the, uh, the companionship uh, of the Prophet in the Jannah or something, something like that. He didn't ask for any of them. So uh, he asked something from the dunya, but something very simple. He said, I asked few goats so I can take their milk. So first of all he asked from the dunya but something very low. He said, oh, uh, oh Prophet of Allah, I ask you the, the, the goats, few goats so I can take uh, the, the milk of them. And the lowest thing, the, the simplest thing he asked. So the Prophet ﷺ got surprised and he said that how can be a person uh, like the old woman of Bani Israel? So from here the story begins. So the companion from their side, they are very keen to know about these stories, to get the knowledge, to gain the knowledge. So instantly they ask the Prophet ﷺ, what is the story of, uh, of old woman of Bani Israel? Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ said when the uh, Musa actually wants to leave uh, with his companion from Egypt, so they lost the place. So uh, Banu Israel, the, the, the children of Israel at that time, they said to Musa, so uh, the children of Israel, as we know, they argue a lot. So they said to Musa that, you know, we, we give promise uh, to, to ourselves that we cannot leave Egypt unless we have Yusuf السلام, with us, either alive uh, as, as a live person or a dead body. But we cannot leave the, the place unless with Yusuf. And because of that, we, we lost the place. So the Prophet uh, Musa said that who will guide us to the grave of Yusuf? They said there is no one except one old lady living in some place. So the Prophet Musa went to that old lady asking for the grave of Yusuf alayhi salam. 
And of course, uh, it was in the in the uh, what do you call uh, uh, casket? Uh, uh, yeah, the, no. Uh, when when the box, people die, uh, actually, casket. the box, you know, casket, casket, casket. 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 Mm. yeah. Coffin. So uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Coffin, So he was there. So the Prophet Musa asked that old lady that, do you know where is the grave of Yusuf? So old ma uh, woman said, yes, I know where is the, uh, where is the grave. So uh, the Musa asked the lady that, can you tell us where is this place, where is this grave is? So the woman said, I will not tell you unless you give me one thing that I will ask you. So they said, what's your request? So the old woman said that I ask you to be uh, be with you in a Jannah. So the Musa didn't reply to her. Because he didn't, he didn't have the authority to make people in Jannah from, from his own. So he didn't say anything because it's, it's uh, permission of Allah. So the Prophet, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to Musa to tell that old woman that she will be in Jannah with Musa alayhi salam. So after that she took Musa alayhi salam to the grave of Yusuf. And the end of the story. This is the story. A very short story. What is the conclusion? What is the benefit of this story? Is there any prophet living on the face of this earth? So we can go and ask him what, uh, how, how this lady went uh, or, or ask Musa and the Musa replied, is there anything like that nowadays? Nothing. Then what is the benefit of the whole story and our whole topic? If there is a door of prophecy uh, closed because of the demise of the Prophet, or any Prophet, and let's say the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he passed away, so the door of the prophecy now is closed. But the Shaykh saying, there is another door, bigger than that door, is still open for us. There is the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the door is open always, especially at the third, uh, at the last third uh, part of the night, and it's open for everyone. So those who get up and pray and and ask Allah, so Allah will say that who is who will call me, so I will respond to his call. Who will ask for my forgiveness, and I will forgive him. And the person will never ever lose anything if he asks Allah whatever he wants. So the person will be into three situations or three categories. And in three categories, the person is willing. The first, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to his dua. The second category of dua, the first one is Allah will accept the dua and that person will get. The second is because of this dua, Allah will take a calamity away from that person. Uh, that calamity was about to fall on that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that dua, will take this calamity away from this person. The third thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give him uh, his dua, not, not answer his dua in the dunya, and will not take away any calamity from him. The third the option is that he will take this dua and keep with him until the day of judgment so he will reward him with the rewards in the day of judgment so it will help him to get into Jannah. And the Prophet said in an authentic hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a living and a generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels shy Allah feels shy that whenever his slave puts his hand, uh, hand 
uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will return his hand empty. So whenever a person asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person should ask what is the highest. Ask the Jannah al those the highest rank of Jannah. And if he knows that Allah is a living, Allah is all hearing, Allah is all, all, all uh, seeing, then he should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest thing in Jannah, which is al firdaus And he should not get attached to anyone else beside Allah because Allah is the one who will accept his dua. Even if uh, at the presence of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person should be only and only stick to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the companion Umar, uh, when they need rain, they used uh, the Prophet, uh, the, the companion Umar never went to the grave of the, of the Prophet. Uh, he used to grab Abbas, the uncle of, of uh, Prophet, and they go to the, to the open place and they ask Allah, Oh Allah, we used to ask for rain when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alive through Muhammad, peace be upon him. But now we are asking, you know, uh, for the rain because of Abbas. So he used to, you used to make dua and the rain used to come. So the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his, by his permission, send the rain, send the rain. So a person have a good chance and good opportunity while he is living, which is the dua. And he should not lose the dua as that Bedouin, you know, lost it by asking something very simple, a few goats and he can take the milk. So you have a great door which is still open for you, not the Prophet, not anyone else. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's door, and it's open for you always. Well, Jazakumallah khair, brothers, and this is a simple uh, story about it. And if you have anything, brothers, uh, Jazakumallah khair.